let's talk about one way to do really straight dog holes in a workbench. I'm finishing up a thing called a pop-up workbench and so I wanted to get dog holes in it and as you can see I've already done that. The whole idea obviously is to get nice straight perpendicular dog holes and get them to be lined up really well. And by the way, in doing the dog holes, I put my smaller top on top of the sawhorses first, and then I put my large top on top of that so that when I drill these dog holes, I can drill them precisely through both tops at the same time. That way, when you want to use the double layer for a top, uh, you can get these dog holes all lined up. Each of my squares here, where I've got cut match fit dovetail grooves, is six inches. So it's six inches from the middle of the groove to the middle of the groove. I took some Baltic birch plywood left over from this same build, and I wanted to get a jig put together that would allow me to have enough of a guidance hole there to get myself at 90 degrees. I didn't want to try to just mark off where the dog hole would go and then go freehand. I wanted something that was stable. I wanted something that would help me keep my bit at 90 degrees. Because when you try to do it freehand, you may look good from your perspective this direction and then you don't realize from over on this side that you're really angled. So I, I laminated these three pieces together, then I cut them to the length that I wanted. To get them lined up with the match fit dovetail grooves, I just placed it on its side, and then I came down with a pencil, and I made sure this was lined up right on the edges, made sure it was 90 degrees or parallel here, not at an angle, and then I just did a little mark right where the edges of each of these grooves is. I then used a combination square to just continue those marks across the jig. Now I had one, two, three, four lines, pairs of lines that represented the dovetail grooves. Took a ruler and I went from corner to corner and drew a line and then drew a line from the other corner and of course where that intersects is the middle. And so I did that for each of these five squares. Now I know exactly where my middles are. I then just used a hole punch to punch that so that my drill bit would find that hole, that exact middle. So I, I have this, uh, and I think it was only about $17 or so, a wood owl, wood owl, O-W-L, made in Japan, smooth three quarter inch auger bit. And what it does is it has a, a, a tip on it that's got grooves and, and when you let the drill do the work by itself, that tip bites into the wood and pulls this auger bit down into the wood. And what you want to do when you drill these holes is let the drill work by itself. Don't press down on it. By the way, how did I get 90 degree holes in my jig in the first place? Well, obviously, it's small enough. I can take that over to my drill press. All right, so you use this drill bit. You've got these nice perpendicular holes because you did them on a drill press. You take your, in this case, the base, and I drew lines across, again, each is squares. I did that on the jig, but I did that down here on the base as well. And so that gave me the center. And I only needed to do that on the two outside edges because if I, this jig's not flexible, if I get the two outside ones lined up, then I should be good to go for the rest of them because these are lined up. So mark that down below, put this over it, look for that uh, cross hatch down below, get it all lined up perfectly, make sure it's flush here and uh, flush this way. And as long as you're very careful going all the way down, 
you should be able to get some really nice, very straight uh, dog. Worked really well. I was very happy with the process. Because you only uh, went part way through and you just let that drill bit poke out at the bottom, then what do you do to finish off the hole? The whole idea of not pressing the drill and letting this finish the hole is because of tear out on the bottom. You want to avoid tear out whenever you can. It would have been cumbersome to try to get a sacrificial piece underneath this whole workbench. What you do then is just let this poke through, so then you flip it over, and because it's poked through, you see all these holes. Well, then you can take a fast bore bit, and or another three-quarter inch bit. I like this because this pointed edge goes into that little hole, and so now I know I'm right in the center of where I need to be, even though I'm coming at it from the other side. And then just a little bit of pressure and take out, you know, about an eighth of an inch is all. And uh, now it'll poke through and you don't have any tear out because now you're going the other direction and you're not gonna push it all the way through. So that's how you get them uh, drilled nice and straight. The only other thing I do, uh, just a personal preference, is I don't like to leave these all sharp uh, edges. I like to do a little round over on them, a little camber. And so I use a 1 16th in my little palm router here. So I use a 1 16th round over bit. Test your uh, depth of your cut on your practice jig and then go do all of your holes. So yesterday we uh, took this test piece of plywood that has three different match fit dovetail grooves in it. And the idea was to try out different finishes and see which ones might be the best performing when you're trying to use match fit dovetail clamps in match fit dovetail grooves. They're really not match fit dovetail grooves, they're just dovetail grooves. So I had done this section here with uh, Watco Danish oil. This one happens to be natural color. Uh, and this is Baltic birch plywood. I did the middle section with a Verathane Ultimate Polyurethane that was water-based and that was interior and it's matte, M-A-T-T-E. -T -E. And then I did this section over here with 50% boiled linseed oil and 50% uh, paint thinner or, or uh, mineral spirits. All right, so they've dried overnight, and now we're ready to test them to see which one we might want to put on any kind of a jig, or in this case, a pop-up workbench, so that these will slide. So let me get these out of the way. I've got these marked. Danish oil, water-based polyurethane, and boiled linseed oil. So let's see how this clamp slides in the polyurethane. Try to get it in there, try to move it along, uh, jiggle it, push it, you know, everything you can. And when I did this, the first coat, it uh, boiled up, as you know, or feathered up because of the uh, water base. So I sanded that off, and then I did the second coat, and that's what has dried. And I also made sure I wiped as much as I could inside of the groove so that I didn't have buildup of excessive polyurethane in there. And I think maybe the water base swells up the wall of the match fit groove. And so you could probably sand it down enough and use a little small uh, chisel and, and get it working better, but that's a lot of work. Let's see if using a different finish is just an easier way. So here's the 50-50 boiled linseed oil.
put that in there and ah <laughs> again uh, and I'm not playing to the camera here this is this is real this boiled linseed oil boom as long as you don't let it build up there too much and then here's the Danish oil is that gonna stick like the polyurethane man that is that is cool. Here's the result. Danish oil, uh, Watco Danish oil works great. The boiled linseed oil, as long as you make sure you wipe your grooves very well, 50-50 uh, mix, that works great. So just decide which look you like the best, which one, this is a little uh, rougher and as you know, workbench tops are not supposed to be sliding around a lot. I'm going to use the Danish oil, but then I'm going to sand it when I'm through on the very top uh, to rough it up a little bit uh, so that I don't have things slide too much on my workbench. That is the small workshop guy's test of what I'm going to use in the future for my match fit dovetail clamp jigs of various types.